Electromagnetic pulses and enemy wolves. It's time for an episode of Get the Fuck Out. Get the fuck out of here. No, no, I cannot. It's serious. So hacked and leaked information shows that the Oath Keepers experienced a boost in their memberships and their donations, not just in the days leading up to the insurrection, but also in the days following that domestic terrorist attack at the Capitol. And according to the Guardian news outlet, um, those who joined the far right extremist group included, get this, combat veterans, retired service persons, at least one serving National Guardsman, several members of the clergy and others involved in security, contracting and the firearms industry. Now, in addition, in response to emails that were sent out by the Oath Keepers asking for assistance from, specifically from the military and service personnel, the group received numerous emails. So there were people who joined, but there were also a lot of people who just offered up their assistance. In total, they say 801 people either joined or donated to the Oath Keepers after January 4th, which happens to be the date when the group posted an article on their site, and it was titled Oath Keepers Deploying to D.C. to Protect Events, Speakers and Attendees on Jan 5 through 6, Time to Stand. However, out of that 801 people, 788 became a member or donated to the group after January 6th, so after the domestic terrorist attack. The Guardian also alleges that some of these people included their titles in correspondence with the group, and they noted that they were corporals, colonels, and even lieutenant colonels. Also, why do we spell colonels the way we spell it? I don't know. Anyway, they also say that while most of these people were retired, some were still active in the military and others, even if they had retired, they've moved on to positions of power. So they had positions of power in the private sector, such as some Marine veterans who went on to work for um, the defense contractor, Northrop Grumman. Also, there was one who went to work for the mercenary slash military contracting company called Blackwater. You may know that's run by Eric Prince, the brother of Betsy DeVos, who worked in Trump's administration. But here's where this story takes a turn into the GTFO territory. The founder of the Oath Keeper, Stuart Rhodes, he started sending out these batshit crazy emails to their mailing list. He was warning them of executions and decapitations after January 6th. I'm not even kidding. According to the Daily Beast, one email was written as though it was being sent to Donald Trump. They say they don't know if it in fact was sent to Donald Trump or if he was just sending it to his supporters. But in the email, he's basically imploring Donald Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act and to use his power to release all of this so-called classified information that he had on the deep state and on Democrats. So he begged Trump to, quote, at the very least, do the mass declassification and data dump. You still have absolute authority as president and commander in chief to declassify any files held by the CIA, FBI, NSA, etc. Use trusted elite units you know are still loyal to the Constitution to get it done. And then in parentheses, he wrote to seize the servers and dump the data on 4chan, 8chan, etc. Now, first of all, 4chan and 8chan no longer exist. They are now 8 coon. But <laughs> second, do these people honestly still believe that if Trump has damning or had damning information, classified information, he wouldn't have already used it? He wouldn't have used it as leverage to remain in power before that time? before January 6th, or that he wouldn't have used it against people in the election? 
in the run up to the election? Are you kidding? Okay, but it gets worse. So Rhodes, uh, Rhodes also warned in emails to his fellow Oath Keepers and to their supporters, quote, the domestic enemy wolves will be at the door of all your supporters as well. Liberty loving American constitutionalists will have no choice but to honor their oaths and defend both the constitution and their families when the communists and obedient deep state minions come for them as they already are planning on doing. Enemy wolves. Really? Is this guy for real? Like, <laughs> he's, he's like a character out of a comedy that's supposed to be about war. <laughs> so anyway, he also wrote, quote, within the short term, we face a very high possibility of intentional calms down scenario where black hats take down slash shut down all communications in the U.S., no cell service, no internet, no landlines, a comms blackout. This could also include a takedown of electrical power, an intentional power blackout. Worst case scenario would be an EMP strike, which is an electromagnetic pulse. I don't know, guys. I mean, he might be right. I mean, do you remember that day that essentially the world stood still? Everything went dark. Remember when our phone stopped working, the internet was down, electricity was completely shut off. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> oh, my God. The level of paranoia. Anyway, he continued, that wasn't it. He continued on saying, quote, the purpose of such a calms down blackout will be to minimize our ability to communicate and to pin people in their homes as the black hats and their terrorist allies conduct a, quote, night of the long knives decapitation strike to arrest or otherwise take out patriot leaders, potential leaders, and highly skilled personnel. So that night of the long knives comment, by the way, was a reference to Nazis, um, essentially saying Democrats are the Nazis. Yeah, the fascists are saying that the Democrats are the Nazis and they're going to round people up. When you literally had Trump out ordering or at least applauding after the fact, extrajudicial killings, like what happened to the guy from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, but yeah, Democrats are going to round people up and decapitate them. How many months are we into the Biden presidency? Not one decapitation yet. Hmm. Wow, we must be slow. <laughs> anyway, Rhodes also then urged his followers to get their hands on as much fuel as possible in preparation for basically evacuations. He wrote, quote, get all the fuel you can, gas, diesel, now, all in caps, get the fuel out of the underground storage tanks and into portable containers, get all you can, you will need it, borrow money or charge it if you have to. So I just, you know, I read this and I'm wondering, how many of these idiots, how many of these paranoid fools have their garages and backyards filled to the brim, filled to the ceiling in their backyard with gasoline cans, loaded gasoline cans, because they bought into this hysteria? I wonder how many years it's going to take them to use it up on their vehicles. I mean, if you're this paranoid, you never leave the house. So <laughs> anyway... Oh my God, could they be any more paranoid and delusional? This can't possibly be normal. What happened to them? What happened to these people? Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> anyway, whether or not these Oath Keepers went into debt buying gasoline that they did not need, I do not know. <laughs> but based on the leaked documents, it's clear that these Chicken little doomsday emails were very effective 
at fundraising. Um, and Rhodes was not shy about asking for money. He asked for money, basically, from what they are saying in basically every email. And between January 18th and February 16th, New Jersey Oath Keepers member Edward Durfee withdrew money from the group account on nearly a daily basis, according to the Daily Beast. So according to the Daily Beast, over the course of that one month, Durfee withdrew over $28,000. Now, keep in mind, he's running for office in that state. They reached out to him for comment, and he had no comment. He didn't get back to them. So nobody knows at this point what he did with more than $28,000 that was donated to the group, if it was maybe used. I mean, I'm just imagining maybe it was used on his campaign, but this is somebody who's running for office. This is what they're doing now, guys. They're trying to take over in local government. And, you know, there's no way to know what's going on in, in Rhodes' mind, if he really believes all of this insane BS he spouts off, or if this is just a money-making ploy for him. I mean, there's other reports saying that he has played fast and loose with the Oath Keepers funds. He was out there spending it on what sounds like porn. He was spending it on all kinds of like eyebrow-raising, questionable things. Um, but what I'm more concerned about and that is not funny because this we can laugh at all this. And yeah, like I've said before, a lot of this stuff is funny. What I'm more concerned about is that others, whether Rhodes believes it or not, others are willing to throw down their hard earned cash because they believe it. There are obviously a lot of people out there who believe this stuff, who believe that this is what's going to happen. Now, think about what people would be willing to do to protect themselves and their loved ones if they honestly believe that the Biden administration or the deep state or whomever is going to send out stormtroopers and executioners to their homes to round them up, to behead them. Seriously, I 100% believe in freedom of speech, regardless of who it is that's speaking. I don't even care if it's neo-Nazis. They have a right to say whatever they want to say. But I also 100% believe that many of these people, through these hysterical emails and speeches that they give, which Rhodes has given some very questionable speeches, they are inciting violence. And they're sending already unstable people over the edge. It's like I was saying the other day, this is leading to violence. That's the problem I had with the Arizona fraud. It. That's the problem I have with stuff like this. It is funny, but it's, I mean, it's a GTFO in many ways. So anyway, guys, as I hear more, I will let you know, hopefully there will be more leaked documents from this, but as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.